similar to the Kansas City experience. Uh, it is an injured lead back with the, with the hype train back up behind him. It is Tommy Rawls and Christine Michael. Rawls and Rawls and Rawls and Rawls and what? what? Yep, there it is. There uh, it is. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, yeah, actually, I'm surprised I didn't go to this backfield right after Kansas City. I don't know why I shifted to Baltimore. I thought that's where you were going, this is, yeah. This I know, more, this more is sense. a more hypey backfield. It's, there's a lot of hype just because Christine Michael is involved. Um, it's a similar situation, though. You know, people drafting Rawls in the third or fourth round. Now he's on a snap count for week one. You know, he's probably going to get eased back in over a few weeks, um, making Michael the lead guy this week and maybe beyond. And, you know, there is... Whereas with the, the Charles and Ware situation, where Charles is this like proven superstar where if he is 100%, it's his job, uh, that's not the case with Rawls. Rawls is you know, a one-year wonder who was an undrafted free agent. Um, Seattle would like if he could do that again, but if he's showing you know, that he's not quite the same guy or he's taking a little longer to recover, and meanwhile, Christine Michael is lighting the world on fire, you know, who, who knows what happens? Michael could, could actually just steal the job outright. Yeah, I think I agree. And, and with this backfield, especially that Michael, if you're comparing Spencer Ware and Kristen Michael, Michael has the higher probability of actually stealing the job. Yeah. Right. Uh, whereas we viewed where I keep on saying where as we viewed where <laughs> as where uh, where as where <laughs> uh, we viewed where as kind of maybe he cuts out like a goal line role when Jamal comes back. If Jamal comes back, let's mm. just assume that Jamal is coming back. <laughs> let's be optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> But in Seattle, you know, we already know that Kristen Michaels, he's number one on the depth chart for week mm -hmm. one. Rawls is only going to get maybe four or five carries. And if Kristen Michael basically replicates what he's been doing in the preseason, then that gives, you know, the coaching staff in Seattle a, a decision to make. You know, are we going to do two-headed monster throughout the rest of the year or just – let Kristen Michael roll with it until he falls apart or doesn't perform. It could be one of those hot hand, like, okay, why rush Rawls back into it? You know, Kristen Michael's here dominating. Yeah. He's, he's awoken, right? He is stay woken. Um, he's stay <laughs> see woke. He, he's see woke. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm definitely with you on it. And this week is kind of a perfect week for him to do it too. Cause it's a very juicy matchup against Miami. Who's just one of maybe one of the worst defenses in the league. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's it's like a really good opportunity for him to, you know, the second half of this game just be, you know, grinding out clock, you know, falls yeah. into the end game zone script. one or two times, and you know, Michael could have a huge week. Um, yeah. So if you own him, he's probably a smart flex play. Um, I like it. If he's on your wire, obviously he shouldn't be on your wire. But if he if you're in like a smaller league, then yeah, go pick him up. Um, the sort of longer term issue is, you know, let's say. You know, Michael has a couple big weeks. Rawls is taking a, a little while to get sort of back into the, the flow of things. Um, what would you do if you were a Michael owner? Ooh. First of all, uh, the Miami matchup you're talking about, let me just drop a little screaming hot matchup. Oh, God. We have to we have to keep that going season <laughs> long. And now that draft season's over, you know, we need to you know, transition. We need, we need to put that draft regular somewhere. Season. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you own C Mike, I agree. He's a, a decent flex play for week one. I think Miami is going to lose the game <laughs> quite soundly. <laughs> it's a hot take. <laughs> uh, so game script uh, backs Kristen Michael as just, you know, like you said, second half, he's just grinding. He's just grinding that clock out. And that could result in like one of these home run touchdowns when the defense is kind of worn out and the game is already lost. Then, oop, there goes Kristen Michael for a 60 yard touchdown and you're fantasy week is one yeah so he's definitely a smart flex or even a rb2 play in my opinion yeah uh i mean there is a world where you start spencer ware and chris and michael on the same team that that is entirely Ooh. possible i don't know i guess <laughs> if you like went like wide receiver heavy and you took like charles and rawls yeah. as like your running backs maybe I, there's some version where like those are your two best options uh this and is maybe that works out <laughs> Zero RB dream right now because I mean think about week one. Le'Veon Bell's already out. Yeah. Right. Ch Charles is probably out. Yeah. Rawls is limited. Mm -hmm. So those, these are already three of like the 
top 12 backs going into the season that are out for week one are the, are will be heavily limited. Yeah. Uh, so it's really, you know, Lamar Miller. It all rests on Lamar. <laughs> it all rests on Lamar Miller's shoulder, and that means he's going to get hurt on the first carry of the season. Fire up those Tyler Irvin shares. <laughs> get get those cooking. But yeah, if you own, back, back on topic here, if you own C Mike, <laughs> I think he. You, you know, you don't want to be duped with C Mike again because yeah. this has happened before. Last year, he was the hot, like, preseason. Oh, go ahead and pick him up. This was when he was on Dallas. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he won't be the starter in week one, but by week six, he might be the guy. That never happened. No, he got uh, released. Yeah, he just straight up got <laughs> released. Went to, what was it, Washington's yeah, practice squad or something? He was on Washington for released. a minute and then got released and then went back to Seattle. <laughs> and then he went back to Seattle. Seattle. Yeah. yeah. And then the so team. we've heard this you know, this narrative before we've seen this happen in the preseason. Now, a lot of people are saying it's different this time. He looks different. Even the players on his team are saying Mm -hmm. he's a different man. I think Doug Baldwin came out today and said, like, who who am I picking to be, like, our MVP, not MVP, but who has transformed the most over the offseason? Definitely Kristen Michael. Yeah. You know, but then he was also talking about how he's going to kneel during the national anthem as well. So there could be, who knows what Doug Baldwin's So who knows what's going through Doug Baldwin's head right now. Yeah. (laughs) But... Uh, you know, you don't want to be fooled, but I think he has the potential to be another one of these D'Angelo Williams light type of players. Mm-hmm. The only problem with Christian Michael is that there are other backs that could yeah. potentially take work. Uh, Procise mm-hmm. was already getting third down work in the pre in the dress rehearsal game. Yeah, he was getting the third down work. Whereas in Pittsburgh, you know, you have your D'Angelo Williams. He's basically the, the three down back if mm-hmm. left belt down where yeah. i don't know if that's the case if say tommy rawls comes out week one he gets his four carries and open oh, the fourth one he uh re-injures his ankle will Kristen michael be the third uh the three down back in seattle i don't think so no i think i think pro size is pretty much locked in as the third down back probably even the like two minute drill back um so i mean his upside is capped a little bit you know i guess best case scenario if rawls did get hurt again uh Christine michael turns into like Doug Martin, I guess, you know, this early down and goal line work that just he just kind of muscles it into a like productive RB one season. Um, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's like his. I think that's his absolute ceiling. I mean, that's also Rawls's absolute ceiling. Um, it's just Rawls yeah. did it for a period of time. But I think I mean, in the same line of thought as we were mentioning with Spencer Ware, you can kind of kick the tires with him, mm-hmm. but he's a player I would probably hold on to. Wait till you actually get production. Yeah. I mean, the risk is that he puts up a fat dud, and then people are like, oh, he's Chris and Michael. That's right. We forgot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we yeah. had our blinders on for a period of time, and then we just realized, you know, we, we awoke yeah. and <laughs> saw that he's actually still Chris and Michael, and then his trade value takes a dive. So there is, you're kind of flirting with disaster there if you wait, but then the reward is a lot higher if he does explode in week one. Then you say, okay, he's going to steal the job from Rawls. He yeah, has more value. He He's more likely to carve out like a real role, but he's also more likely to just like be insignificant again in a week or two. Yeah. Um, so it's definitely risky with Michael. Um, but I guess, yeah, I guess it's just hold and play out that risk. Because unless you're talking to the Rawls owner, you're probably not going to be able to sell him for that much. Um, yeah. And there, there's this is one of those situations where I'm going to want to monitor it really closely to see how Michael actually plays. Because uh, Rawls probably at this point won't. It'll be like week three before he has any kind of significant role in this offense. Um, and I, I really want to see what Michael actually does in those two weeks, not just look at the box score and see like, oh, well, he put up these numbers. Okay. You know, did he actually play really well or did he, you know, get stuffed a bunch and then break off an untouched run? Um, yeah, it, it's really if I need to see him actually playing really well to buy that he's going to keep rolling Rawls is back because if, if it isn't yeah. that if he just kind of rips off some lucky runs, but it's kind of cruddy on the other side of things, then I would sell him as soon as Rawls was starting to come back. Yeah, you, this is one I we mean, have to actually pay close attention. I think you you do. And I mean, the knock with Kristen Michael was always his head wasn't really in the game and he lacked some key fundamentals of mm-hmm. just the NFL running back like he didn't know how to transfer the ball when he ran yeah and there was actually this this run in the preseason 
where he was still having issues transferring <laughs> the ball. That's that, that hasn't gone away. No. He you like cut to the outside and you're still running with the ball in his inside hand, but he was like he wasn't even close to being tackled. So then you see like the light go on and you realize this, oh shit, I need to change <laughs> the ball. So like Mid run, like really <laughs> awkwardly, he like transfers the ball over to his outside arm. But I mean, that could have resulted in disaster. It was only because he had already like broken into the open field. But he transferred the ball really, really late. <laughs> it was almost comical. And like, oh, 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 is he gonna do it? Oh, we did it. Okay. Yeah. So there are still some things that you know he's, he's lacking a little bit. But he does have that that hypey power and that physical, that raw physical ability that people love. Ah, uh, Chris and Michael. It's, there's, there will never be a fantasy year where we're not talking about Chris and Michael. No, no, he's always going to keep himself relevant. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I guess it's we're, we're saying fire him up this week um, and then keep it on the next couple of weeks of production to see if you should be selling Michael or buying Rawls. I mean, we'll be talking more about it too as each week progresses. Mm-hmm.